The goal of this experiment is twofold. One is to figure out the KSP, the solubility product constant of calcium iodate, which is a solid in an equilibrium with calcium ion and iodate, IO3 minus. So to balance it, we put a two here. When we do our ice table, this will be plus S, the S stands for solubility, and this will be plus 2S because there's two moles of this. So remember, solids never go into the equilibrium constant, so the KSP is the calcium ion concentration times the IO3 minus ion concentration squared. The squared comes from the two here. So the first one is to calculate KSP. The second goal is to standardize sodium thiosulfate. So in all of these experiments, you're going to do a series of titrations. You'll do up to four tri titrations. Each titration you'll do twice. So at the burette, you're going to put about 50 mils of Na2S203. This is sodium thiosulfate. And here, uh, depending on the experiment, you're going to put uh, the Ki solid, some HCl to make it acidic, water, KiO3, if you're going to standardize this. Um, to figure out the KSP, you're going to put the filtrate in and then some starch to give it a blue color. Let's first talk about the standardization of sodium thiosulfate. So this is what's happening. Again, remember what's happening in the experiment. You're adding um, the KiO3, which will react with the Ki. Here, the potassium K is a counter ion, so we're not going to worry about it. Adding two drops of strong acid HCl, so the Cl is a counter ion. H plus is going to acidify it, some water, and then the starch. So this is what's happening here. Now, the IO3 minus will react with the I minus here, along with the acid, to give you I2. The I2 will actually react with the starch that's put in the flask to give you a blue color. Now, the minute you start adding this Na2S203, by the way, the sodium is a counter ion or spectator ion, so we're really concerned with S203 minus 2, the ion. The minute you start adding this S203 minus 2, it's going to react with the I2. Now, it's going to react with your I2 until all of it is gone. Once all of it is gone, you're going to have IO3 minus left over. And that IO3 minus is going to react with the S203 minus 2 to give you all of this other stuff. Now, so how do you know when this titration is over? The titration is over when the starch color disappears, the blue color disappears. So when all the I, I2 is gone, it will no longer react with the starch. The blue color will be disappearing. So when all of the S203, however much, reacts with all of the IO3 minus, the blue color disappears. It is this IO3 minus, it is this IO3 minus that you're going to use and plug it in here to get your KSP. So one of the questions in the pre-lab to help you prepare for this lab is asking you just how much of this S203 minus 2 is going to react with the KiO3. So to do that, you're going to look at the net equation, and the net equation is this. So um, you're going to put 10 mils here in the flask, the tight trend. Um, the concentration in the bottle is 0.01 molar that you pick up from the side of the lab. According to the net uh, equation, there's six moles of uh, thiosulfate that reacts with the iodate, IO3 minus. And in the bottle, the concentration is about 0.025 moles per liter or molar. Now, this is not the accurate con uh, concentration. That's why you're standardizing it. So you see in standardization, you're getting the most accurate concentration. Uh, that's in the bottle. So doing this, according to the balanced chemical equation and the stoichiometry within it, you're going to get about 24 mils of the S203. So uh, that's approximately where this should turn colorless, but that's a guess. So um, the procedure requires you to just uh, go down all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way to about 21 or 22 mils, and then add the starch, uh, and then go drop by drop by drop by drop until the blue disappears. Again, uh, the point where all the S203 minus 2 reacts with all the IO3 minus, uh, sort of the equivalence point, is when the blue is gone. Okay, so that's the standardization. To figure out the IO3 minus to compute your KSP, um, you're going to take, um, if you did a gravity filtration of your precipitate, so uh, the precipitate is there, you filtered it out, uh, you take some of that uh, precipitate, 
uh, put it at 40 mils. So you're going to put some of that. I think you put 10 mils in here. And then you're going to take some of that 80 mils uh, from the precipitate uh, that you put in 80 mils. And then you're going to take 10 mils of that and uh, do it, put it in here. So, so here are the results that we have obtained. Your numbers may be different than mine, which is okay, because everyone's group is going to have different numbers. Uh, but remember the overall theme here. Um, is to try to, uh, number one, calculate KSP, and number two, standardize the S sodium thiosulfate. So this is the first thing you did in your experiment. Um, so remember, we took 10 mils in our flask. Uh, that corresponds to about 0 0.0010 moles. So the way we get that is 10 mils from the bottle, uh, whose concentration is 0 0.01 molar of IO3 minus. Remember, the potassium is a spectator ion. It's a counter ion. It's not participating in any of these reactions. So these are the results from the first uh, trial. So sometimes you can do three trials if you mess up, uh, but we were able to get it in two trials. And again, your numbers may be different. Uh, final Barrett reading was 27.10 milliliters initial reading is 0, 0.00. I always tell students to always fill it up to the top. That way, um, the amount you put in is just a simple subtraction. So how do we get to the final molarity here for trial one? And then the same thing with trial two. We'll just average those two together. Um, well, you see, we took 10 mils of IO3 minus that was sitting in the Erlenmeyer flask. Um, and it's a concentration of 0.01 molar, which is moles per liter. The net reaction has for every six moles of S2O3 minus 2 thiosulfate, there's one moles of IO3 minus. We get that from the balanced chemical equation. So doing that math, we get about 0 0.0006 moles. Now, in my titration, your number may be different than mine, but uh, it turned colorless from blue at about 27.10 milliliters. So we'll convert that to liters. And so 0 0.0006 moles divided by that many liters to get the uh, equivalence point is about 0.02214 molar. So that is the standard concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Do that a second time. Uh, my results for the second time pretty much parallel the first time. If you mess up, you can also do a third time. Um, it's important to realize that when you do this uh, in your barrette, you record your volume to two decimal places because the barrette is meant to be read in two decimal places. So now that we standardize the sodium thiosulfate, we can move on to the actual filtrate. That's the one where you precipitated the calcium iodate. You split it up into three, just in case one of them messes up. And then you put it in 40 mils and then 80 mils of water to try to get that in. So in that case, the filtrate, the one that went through the filter paper, collecting the precipitate was collected in the uh, filter paper and everything that flowed through contained IO3 minus. So um, that IO3 minus went into the flask. And we did the exact same titration. Okay, remember the S2O3 minus 2 um, was in the buret, okay, or burette. So it turned colorless for me at about 33.70 milliliters. Now this is, this first titration is kind of your testing titration. It's a titration where um, you're just seeing approximately how much is going to uh, go in in titration. It's called a exact titration, that's when you go, you know, at about 31 mils, and then at 31 mils, you go drop by drop by drop by drop by drop. So it's the exact titration, really, that um, we're interested in, because the exact titration where you go drop by drop by drop by drop by drop gives you the um, more accurate reading. So these, uh, for filtrate one and filtrate two, this is from 40 mils, this is from 80 mils, this is the exact titration. But you gotta do one beforehand to get the rough titration, right? And then you do the exact titration. So 33.70 milliliters of S2O3 minus two reacted with the 40 mil filtrate of which 10 mils went into the flask. So this is how we get the um, moles of S2O3 minus 2 used. So it took 33.7 milliliters um, of the S2O3 minus 2. We convert that to liters. Um, we got our uh, standard concentration. I'll highlight that in yellow. 
So the standard concentration is here. This is the more accurate concentration than what's in the bottom. This is the number of moles. And we take that number of moles of S2O3 minus 2, realizing that for every six moles of S2O3 minus 2, there is one mole of IO3 minus. So doing that, we get 0 0.000124 moles of IO3 minus. And the 0 0.000124 moles of IO3 minus okay, was actually went into 10 mils. So we got it divided by 10 mils, which is 0 0.010 liters. So dividing this number of moles by 10 milliliters that went into your flask, converting it to liters, we get moles per liter. And that's the answer we get uh, for the first titration. And we do that also for the second titration. These are exact titrations. And we get a value of about, or I got a value of about 0 0.000121. Uh, we can average those to get the approximate concentration of the IO3 minus. So now that we figured out the concentrations of the IO3 minus from both of our filtrates, we can use that to plug it into our KSP equation. So once again, calcium iodate is at an equilibrium with calcium ion and iodate ion. Um, it's going to be plus S and plus 2S for the IO3 minus because you have two moles here. So products over reactants, KSP is this equation. Remember, we don't add solids. So the concentration of IO3 minus, which you saw in the Excel spreadsheet, was 0.0124 for one of the filtrates and 0.0121 for the others. So if we do an average, we get about 0.01225. And that concentration of IO3 minus is 2S, as standing for solubility. So S is actually going to be uh, this number divided by 2. So the calcium ion concentration is S, which is about 0.006125. And the IO3 minus concentration is 2S, coming from here. And we solve that to be um, the average of these two as 0 0.01225. So we're going to square that. Don't forget to square it. Times 0 0.006125 gives us a KSP of about 9.20 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, to get the solubility, uh, we can actually take the IO3 minus and because it's 2s, we'll divide it by 2 to get s. Um, and we multiply it by the molecular weight to get about 2.4 uh, in one trial. And in the second filtrate, we got about 2.3. So about 2.3 to 2.4 grams per liter, if you want to express the solubility that way. Or you can express, express the solubility s uh, in terms of concentration. In that case, uh, it's going to be the average of... Um, 0 0.062 and 0 0.0605. So let's quickly go over some of these post-lab questions. The solubility of calcium iodate is something that we solved previously. Um, basically, if we go back to our calculations, uh, this is what we got from the titration of the filtrate. This is my data, but your data may be somewhat similar. It could be different. That's okay. We're looking for a KSP around 9.2 times 10 to the minus 7. The solubility S in grams per liter is going to be about 2.4, or you can put it in concentration terms of about 0 0.006 molar. Remember, molar is moles per liter. Second question in part in the post lab was asking for why the solubility should be the same. Solubility should be identical simply because they came from one precipitate. If you remember the methodology for uh, this lab, you precipitated the calcium iodate and you um, washed the uh, precipitate. Some of the IO3 minus went into the flask, which was your filtrate, the flow through, and it came from that source. So one of the precipitates, you washed it and put it in 40 mils, uh, 40 mil wash. The other one was an 80 mil wash. Um, so basically the answer to this question is that they both came from uh, the saturated solution of calcium iodate. So the solubility should be identical. And part C is asking for the solubility of calcium iodate. We got about 9.70 or 9.20, excuse me, times 10 to the minus 7. Your data should be somewhat matching to that. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, make sure you report that in your discussion section. Errors. Um, first error that could potentially be introduced is the precipitate of calcium iodate 
when obtained is not washed with distilled water. Um, if it is not washed with distilled water, uh, the solubility will be larger than it actually is uh, because water um, will actually dilute the IO3 minus. So you're not washing it, less dilution, uh, more concentrated IO3 minus. So um, it would be more soluble. Part B, the concentration of potassium iodate used for standardizing the solution. This is the standardization part, uh, the first part you did in the lab. It's somewhat greater than 0 0.0100. So if it's somewhat greater than 0 0.001, if it's somewhat greater than 0 0.010, then uh, the calculated solubility will be too large. So your standard solution is more concentrated, and the IO3 minus that you get out is going to be more concentrated. Finally, the extraneous water is introduced from the wet filter paper or wet funnels or by washing the precipitate during the final filtration. Again, uh, washing. It, basically basically dilutes the situation. So if you wash it during your procedure with more water than needed, uh, more water will actually dilute the IO3 minus that's in your filtrate. More dilute IO3 minus that's gonna be in your filtrate um, means more dissolved ions in water and your solubility will be much, much larger than